Wow, praise the Lord, everybody, and welcome to Just Call Me Sarah. Oh my God, we're going to have such a wonderful time tonight. I have two amazing, awesome guests on the program with me, and we're just going to be talking about a little fitness, a little exercise. You know, we can't all go to the gym now like we used to uh, since COVID, but we're going to be showing you how to do some exercise right in your home. Amen. And I have two guests. Um, my first guest is, well, both of them on the same time. It's Alex knows. Hi, Alex. How are you? <laughs> mm -hmm. And your beautiful wife, Dr. Mathilde knows. Great to see Amen. you. Amen. <laughs> you know, I thank God because I've been knowing you for so long. It's Jones. You're right. But y'all been married now for a year, right? A little over a year. Yeah. 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 I am so happy and so delighted to have you on Just Call Me Sarah with me. And I met you when we both was in Leadership Greenville. That's right. Class Seven years 42. ago now. What class? Leadership Greenville, LG42. Yeah. The best class. Yeah, the best <laughs> class. <laughs> so y'all going to be showing us a little exercise that we can do at home instead of going out and getting in the mix of COVID. Right. But I do have a scripture that I do want to share uh, before we go to you. And it's lifted from 1 Corinthians 6 and 9. It says, what? Know you not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, mm. which is in you, which you have of God, and ye are not your own. Amen. We are not our own. Amen. We got to take care of these bodies. That's I right. always That's true. You know, right. tell my husband, I said, we want to live long, but we want to live long and strong. strong. Yes. Absolutely. <laughs> yes. Absolutely. Amen. So we're going to be talking about faith, family, and fitness. Faith, family, and and fitness. So call somebody and ask them uh, to tune in to just call me Sarah tonight um, because we want you to make sure that you take care of your bodies. So Alex, hi. Hi, how are Tell you? Tell us about you. Well, I've been a personal trainer for about six years now and I was really driven uh, some time ago after I had my hip replaced. Okay. All right, after working out and didn't have an accident, but my, the wear and tear took its toll on me and I got very conscious of my fitness. I was already at another level and I was helping people indirectly. People were watching me. You never know who's watching. <laughs> and it was a suggestion of a friend who said, hey, you might want to think about being a personal trainer. Yeah. You're developing a following. So here I was um, when I went out for my surgery. I did some research, went to find out what does it take to be a personal trainer. Went ahead, did some homework, took the exam, and in, in June of 2014, I became a personal trainer, and I've been on this road seriously since then. So wow. it's really been a blessing. I've, I've tried to help as many people as I can get fit. Yeah, well, I tell you, well, you look like you fit. I mean, you really uh, know. I see you on Facebook, and I see you working that. out, and I see Dr. Mattia working out, yeah. you know, and I love to see that. I don't do it a whole lot, but I love to see it. <laughs> Yeah, we put a lot into it. Really, that's our mantra, you know. Like I, like you said earlier, faith, family, fitness, and fitness is the part we we really take a lot of a lot of pride in. Also, yeah. you know, we don't we, the first two are important, but that last one we just can't because in these, especially in these times that we're in now. Yeah, mm. I think being married to you is about like a, a student being married to a teacher. You know, like I know I got to get the homework because my mom or my daddy is the teacher. Oh know? yeah, and it works both ways. She teaches me a lot also, so trust me. Hi, Dr. Good. Mattia. Hi. 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 Good, good to see you. Mm -hmm. Good to see you again. <laughs> it's good to <laughs> see you. It's good to see you. You're looking so beautiful. You're Thank always, you. You're just such a beautiful woman of God. Thank Tell you. Tell us about you. So my background is very different than Alex's. I have a long lifetime history of being very morbidly obese. Yeah. And I finally got serious about it in 2016. I was developing a lot of medical problems that hadn't all come, but they were getting close, <laughs> yeah. and I got uh, a doctor who gave me good guidance, and more importantly, I got serious up here, and I got with a trainer. Right. And so through all those, all of that extra help and um, nutrition and, and fitness, I was able to lose about 180 pounds, and I'm still on that journey. Wow. And it's been How something. How much? 180. Oh my goodness. One eight zero. Mm. <laughs> so, mm. And it's life changing and, yeah. and, li and life saving. And so what I've done with that, because I don't believe it's just for me. Yeah. I believe I'm supposed to share the lessons and the tips and the knowledge. So I do a lot of speaking and I do that in conjunction with things that Alex do. We do some speaking right. together and I developed a model for how to help people just know what to do. Right. And a lot of it starts with changing your mindset. So a lot mm. of the 
sp uh, speaking that I do is inspirational yeah. in nature. And you're going to have ups and downs. When yeah. you, when you, any kind of goal you have to get from here to here, you're going to have ups and downs. And I've had those mm -hmm. this past year, even with COVID and yeah. everything that's been going on. I also had a medical issue that surfaced that caused me to gain weight. Wow. Uncontrollably. Yeah. And so there were weeks where I was gaining three and four pounds a week. But with a strong, strong mind, strong foundation, yeah. I was able to hold on <laughs> and mm. stay focused on my goal and not give up. And even that helps other people. Yeah. So we love doing that. And we uh, have been doing some workshops and stuff for free to help people just stay encouraged and also know exactly what to do. So. It's a, it's a partnership, and we Absolutely. definitely do are each other's accountability <laughs> partners. Mm -hmm. So tell us so. about your workshops. Well, the workshop you did, like Matilda said, it, was, it came from really being, wanting to help people, and it came upon us from one of our one of my clients, yeah. who asked, "What does weight loss look like? What's the visualization of weight loss?" And we decided to put together a Saturday afternoon podcast. It lasts about an hour, hour and a half, where we just talk. It's yeah. a round table discussion. We have anywhere from 10 to 30 people at any given time. And we talk about some of the elements that are involved in transformation. Yeah. Okay. It starts with changing your mindset, as Matteo said, taking action, um, going through those trying time, enduring the pain, uh, completion, and seeing your purpose at the end. Mm -hmm. And like Matteo said, it's not a direct you know, line to it. You're going to have ups and downs, but mm -hmm. we talk those things through. We have people come on and share some of their personal stories. Wow. Because we believe, we truly believe that stories is what sells. That's what really gets people in God. Yeah. We can tell you all the facts and Google all this, these things and give you the facts, but until somebody gets a personal testament as to how they achieved and how mm -hmm. they got through their challenges, yeah. it doesn't really resonate. So a real story from somebody who's accomplished, whether it be weight loss, uh, achieved some things when it comes to moving up in corporate America. Once you understand what that journey is about, then it becomes meaningful to people. So it sprung from uh, COVID, kind of bringing everybody yeah. back to the home. <laughs> you know, the, one of the good things that did come with COVID, if you, if you want to call it that, and having us just having that discover. We use the technology with Zoom, and every Saturday afternoon at five o'clock. Uh, Four o'clock. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> Four o'clock yeah. uh, <laughs> Eastern Standard Time. We sit. We sit for about seventy-five minutes, and we talk through uh, those elements of transformation. And it's free, and we're not selling anything. Yeah. We're not promoting anything. We just create a space for people to learn how to become the best version of themselves. Awesome. So I want to so. ask: Are you ever too old to learn to exercise? Oh, no. <laughs> okay, no, well, show me something. Nothing. <laughs> show me something. Never too quick. old to learn. I, I, I'm here to tell you. <laughs> I'm 58, my wife is 54, so age is not the issue, okay. all right? You can do some basic things right in your home, all right? So for those of you, of course, with COVID being what it is, we don't have the access to the gym. So just doing basic exercises, basic movement. The body was made to move, and we need to know that, all right? So this sedentary lifestyle that we can fall into with COVID, watching TV, does not have to be exactly what it is. So when I usually work with clients, um, we talk about warming the body up before we do anything strenuous. So okay. what I might have them do, I start from the top and work my way down. I may have them do just some arm circles just to activate the shoulders where we just come forward for a few seconds. <laughs> all right, forward <laughs> for a few seconds. And then we stop and then we reverse. All right, we want to activate the muscles that we're about to exercise. All right, after that, just kind of cross them over. Again, we're working the back of the, and the front of the shoulders, okay? Simple exercises, nothing too aggressive. All right, we don't want anybody to hurt themselves during the warm up. Okay, <laughs> all right. Then after that, what we do is kind of I ask people to just grab their wrist behind them and just kind of pull their shoulders down. All right, that gives your shoulders some activation, and you just hold for a few seconds. Okay, and at that point, we work our way down. I may have them do what we call helicopters, if you will, but we're working. The middle section, that okay. trouble area that everybody oh, yeah, seems to have. Oh, yeah, that's trouble area right, All right? there. Where we just kind of gently <laughs> activate <laughs> our, our waistline, those love handles, as we say, okay? <laughs> All right, then we work our way down, and I have people just kind of reach down toward their feet and just kind of release, engage their glutes, their hamstrings, just kind of reach down, hold it for a second. It releases your back, your lower back a little bit. Come back up slowly. Okay, again, legs, ask them to kick back, the quads, 
Oh, I can do that. Right. <laughs> this is just gently. Okay. At that point, we might knee raises. Okay. Knee raises. And we can even come out. Um, and out just to activate the inner thighs, all right? <laughs> so this is all a five minute warm up that we do just to kind of get the body warm and then we move into the actual uh, workout portion uh, of the session. Um, again, there are so many things you can do without weight. We have a few things here that we generally have, you know, there's some basic, of course, the typical dumbbells, thank you, that you find <laughs> that people generally have or you have access to in the gym. If you happen to have them at home, simple bicep curls for the front part of your arm. What okay. size weight? Well, it's all relative. <laughs> okay. And what that comes down to is how much weight can you move comfortably okay. and maintain in good form. Mm -hmm. What we don't want when we're doing bicep curls, we don't want a whole lot of rocking. People, if it's too heavy, you have to rock to move the weight. Yeah. That's not a good thing. The idea is to exercise the arm, not okay. your back. Yeah. So you get a comfortable weight. How many can you do comfortably without sacrificing form? Because what okay. we don't want to do is hurt yourself. Okay. Okay. People start to rock and start to do a whole lot of extraneous movements, and then you end up with another issue. Yeah. Okay. Which we don't want. So once you've established what you can do comfortably, that's the mark. So if maybe it's six, maybe it's eight, everybody's different. Mm -hmm. um, and how much weight can you do? Again, that varies from person to person. Mm -hmm. But we want to be able to move the weight in such a way that you're moving it comfortably and you're moving it which challenges you, but you're not sacrificing form. Form okay. is very, very, very important. So if we were doing shoulder presses, just going up up, keeping your back straight. You don't want to lean back. You don't want to lean forward. Straight up straight and down. Up. Make sure you have a wide base mm -hmm. so you can carry the weight and comfortably and then you bring them down. Okay? Yeah. So basic exercises that we can do with dumbbells. Mm -hmm. If you don't have dumbbells, no. Mm -hmm. No, if you don't have dumbbells, mm -hmm. these are what we call Resistance bands. Okay. Okay. Similar exercises. Um, you can buy these at Amazon or Target or Walmart. They usually come in a set of three or five. Yeah. To simulate bicep curls. Put your feet right in the middle. And again. Wow. Same type of exercise. These come, like I said, in a set of five. You can probably pay about $20, $25 if you go to Amazon or Walmart. Yeah. And again, same type of thing. Okay. They come in various resistance levels, so you find a level that you can do comfortably, and it's all about just stretching the muscle the right way, comfortably, and being able to manage the weight. Wow. Very important, I mean, I put a lot of emphasis on form. Have fun with it, sure, but make sure your form is what you need it to be. You don't want to sacrifice form trying to do Superman type efforts when you really can't handle the weight else you'll end up hurting yourself. You don't want that. Awesome. All right. Well, we're getting ready to go to a song right now by Johnny Ruffin Jr. And he's going to be singing Order My Steps. <laughs> Another thing 
right on my tongue. Let my word edify. Let the words of my mouth be acceptable in thy sight. Take charge of my thoughts, Lord. Both day and night, please order my steps in your word. Oh, order my steps in your word. Oh, In your anointing, I need you, Lord, for the master. For the master, because I want to walk worthy. I want to walk worthy. I want to walk worthy. Wow, well, that was the amazing Johnny Ruffin Jr. singing Order My Steps. And we're so happy to have him with us on Just Call Me Sarah tonight. God bless you, Johnny. Uh, we've been talking to Alex and Dr. Mateo Knowles <coughs> about um, faith, family, and fitness. So right now, I'm going to go back to them. Just let them go on from here. Just take us, okay. take us on in. <laughs> Thank you. Well, again, like we said earlier, um, this should be fun. All right, we want people to exercise, we want people to move, and we talked about some of the different modes um, of exercise. So what we would like to do now is just kind of give you a little demo of how we do some of the things without equipment. I right? you know we talked about dumbbells, we talked about the resistance bands, which is good, but um, I have my wife help me out here. What we're gonna do is just kind of show you a basic squat. All right, to activate the hamstrings, the glutes, the lower part of your body. So you want to have your feet about shoulder width apart. Okay, stand straight up. And then you want to bend at the knees and come on down. So one, there you go. All right, one more. So what, what Mathilde here does, is, is doing, is actually just putting her body, her lower body into some sort of engagement. All right, now with this, <laughs> as you know, everybody is different. We all have a different range of motion, but we do what we can based on what your body's telling you. So listen to your body. This is not supposed to hurt, okay? <laughs> but you're supposed to feel some sort of engagement, and it's important that you understand what's going on with your body. Um, there are also things you can do without exercise in space. You want to activate your shoulders like I kind of did earlier, and just kind of push your arms up, straight up in the air, what we call raising the roof, yeah. but it's activating the shoulders and parts of your back, okay? Mm. All right, and then even with that, bring your arms down with a towel, if you will. For those of us who don't have resistance bands, for those of us who don't have <laughs> uh, dumbbells, what we can do is bicep curls. So hold that on the hand the same way. You gotta hold it tight, bring it down to your lap, pull it down, and pull it tight. And then as you come up, as if you're curling the dumbbells. Yeah. You will feel the tension in the front part of your arm, okay? Mm. So these are the things you can do with a basic towel, which most of us have at home, yeah. all right? We can also take that same towel and do um, some of the shoulder exercises I just showed you. So up and in front of you, in front, yeah, right, exactly. Now you're activating, again, the shoulders and what we call the lats, okay? Again, basic exercises you can do yeah. at home. That same towel, bring it down in front of you, and we can do front shoulder raises. Just come on up, and all this time that we're using the towel, we're yeah. pulling it tight, so we're creating oh. our own tension. Okay. Right, you'll notice she has it very tight, and that activates the front of the shoulder. Wow. All right, again, with a basic towel. This is just some of the exercises right. you can do. Yeah. <laughs> so, Alex, right. how often should we exercise? What? Okay, I'm well, holding really on what tight. You're yeah, like real tight, and okay. if you want to do the front shoulder raise, just come on up, all right? And Exactly. As you're pulling them tight, 
you'll feel the tension in your shoulder. Now, the answer to that question, how often should we exercise? From a maintenance standpoint, or just getting activated, yeah. recommend three times a week, oh, a minimum of 30 <laughs> minutes, <laughs> 30 minutes uh, a day. Very important just for the initial activation. If you're really looking to uh, take it to the next level and really do something that's really more intensive, yeah. then we say five times a week, mm. at least 45 minutes a day, okay. all right? And that could be, I mean, depending on where you are, that, that time can be spent just walking. If you're a sedentary person, take a walk, all right? If the weather isn't conducive, walk around your neighborhood. Okay. Um, if you have space in your backyard, utilize that space. If you have any of these modalities that we talked about, go ahead, we can, we can put together something for you where you can actually do a certain body part or given body parts on a given day. Yeah. Because ideally, you really should not be working the same body part two days in a row. You have to give the body a chance to heal, oh, okay. to recover. Yeah. So I would not suggest you do bicep curls five days a week. When you're working out, you're breaking the muscles down so they can build up stronger. But if you're in a constant broken down state, mm. it takes a while for the muscle to heal. It's like yeah. if you have an injury, you don't want to go running right after you've broken your foot. Mm -hmm. All right. You'll never give it a chance to heal. Okay. So it's the same type of mentality. You want to give your body a chance to recover, uh, the certain body part to recover when you are uh, working out. So you don't want to do the same exercise or work the same muscle two days in a row. Let at least 48 hours go between working that particular muscle, whether it be a leg or your hamstrings, your biceps, triceps, shoulders, whatever it is, let some time go. Because I guarantee you, if you're new to this, you'll feel the soreness in that muscle. So you might not even want to, you'll be less apt to want to work that muscle if you're feeling that soreness, work another part of the body. So I see that you brought your mat with you. And yeah. uh, so I want you to demonstrate how do we use the mat. Okay, floor exercises are, are very, very, very important, okay? You can work a whole lot of your core, all right? So let's just try a basic plank, all right? And with this, you wanna keep uh, the back straight. Come on up, all right? Yes, the idea is just keep the back straight and, and tip your head a little bit. Everything's aligned, yeah. all right? You can also yeah. go down to your forearms, all right? Bring yourself down and also raise up and boom perfect alignment in the back that engages the whole body from top to bottom. Wow. For those of you, hold on, for those of you who don't, who can't maintain the weight on your feet and your arms, mm -hmm. you can do them on your knees. Do a plank on your knees, same type of engagement. Right, exactly. Just raise your feet up, right, there you go. And you can also drop down to your forearms. Okay. And do the same type of thing. Exactly. Simple, thank you. All right, we can also do, uh, what we call upper body crunches. So you have a seat, right? And, and with this, if you mm -hmm. lay back, all you wanna do is bring your, sh go down slowly, right? And your idea is just to bring your shoulder. You don't have to do a full sit up. Okay. You really wanna engage the upper part. So just come on up slightly. The idea is just to bring your shoulders up, okay. go back down and repeat. Okay. That hits the abs, all right? You can do the same type of thing in reverse where you actually, Keep everything on the floor, and then you bring your knees up towards your chest. Oh, okay. All right? That hits the lower part of the abs, mm -hmm. and just repeat. All right? So these are, like I said, that hits the, that stomach area that we oh. all have that little challenge yeah, with. Yeah, I'm putting towel right. over it. Right, <laughs> right. <laughs> we all have those challenges, especially during these times of COVID yeah. where we are home more and eating uh, foods that we don't normally eat or we really shouldn't be eating. Yeah. But, um, those are the type of things you can do. And then just as a spillover, this kind of puts a lot of emphasis on nutrition. Okay. Right now, it is just so important that we put the right things in our body because, not just because of COVID, but because all the things that go right. with yeah. um, overeating, a lot of the bad foods uh, that we are all exposed to. Yeah. So um, getting our carbs from the right sources, whole grains, mm -hmm. whole grain rice, whole grain pasta, whole grain bread, staying away from 
um, some of the white breads, okay. the white rice, because those things have a lot of refined sugars, refined yeah. flours, which will give you the belly fat, the excess fat that you're trying to get rid of on your legs, oh, your back, that wow. we all, like I said, we all go through it. We've yeah. all been there. So we want to really watch. Vegetables, you can't have enough, okay? Vegetables are low in calories, high in nutrients, and it comes down to how you prepare them, okay? Yeah. We want to steam them. We want to broil them. We, we don't necessarily want to slather them with a whole lot of uh, extras, oils okay. that we don't necessarily need. Cook them in water, whatever possible. Um, and then when it comes to protein, um, of course, if, you go, if you're a meat eater, chicken, fish, turkey, if you indeed are that person, all right, I, for one, am a vegan. My wife and I, we, we, we went vegan uh, almost two years ago. Yeah. Where we eliminated some of those products, and we feel a lot better as a result. But if you are going to eat those things, I don't want to deny anybody portion control. Okay. okay. Understanding four ounces, three ounces, four <laughs> ounces is what you should be taking in as far as protein. And combine that with um, exercise, you can maintain, you can reach uh, an ideal weight that you can maintain and sustain at a healthy level. Okay, Alice, we only got a couple minutes mm -hmm. before we go off the air, but tell us about the water and then this. tell us how we can get in contact with you. Right. Okay? Water is the essence of what you should be taking in during the day. Yeah. Throughout the day, the goal is ideally to drink half your body weight in water. Mm -hmm. In other words, if you happen to weigh 150 pounds, you yeah. should be taking in 75 ounces of water. Wow. Okay? That should be your marker. Okay? Um, if you weigh 200 pounds, then the goal should be work your way up to 100 ounces. And so that's about sipping and gulping throughout the day, having the access that's all amazing. day. That's what keeps things flowing and keeps the body clean. Okay? Yeah. Now, how to reach us? Um, my website is www.air3.us. Mm -hmm. um, you go there, you'll see pictures of myself, pictures of me training clients. We have a nutritional section there. There are ways of, of how to reach us. Um, I'm on Facebook. I have a Facebook page, AIR3. Mm -hmm. I'm also on Instagram, yeah. a, uh, Air3 Wellness. AIR3 Wellness, all one word. You can contact me that way also. And wow. Mateel? You can contact me, MateelSpeaks.com, or same thing on Facebook. Okay. Well, thank you both for coming and sharing with us today. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for tuning in to Just Call Me Sarah. <laughs> that was uh, Alex and Dr. Mateel Knowles. To God be all the glory. Thank you for tuning in. God bless. Amen. <laughs>